In this demonstration, we're going to look at how we configure an ESXi host after we've done an initial install. So what we're presented with is we're presented with the Direct Console User Interface, and the Direct Console User Interface gives us the ability to manage our management network and a few other settings as well. So to log into this, we just hit the F2 key, put in our root username and password that we specified as part of the installation of the ESXi host. Configure password, I've already got that set, so I'm not going to bother changing that. That was set as part of the installation. Configure lockdown mode is greyed out. Now, the reason why that's greyed out is we can only configure lockdown mode on an ESXi host that is being managed by a virtual center server or a vCenter server, which we haven't configured yet. Next thing we get is to configure our management network. So our management network is what we connect to in order to administer our ESXi host and also as well what your vCenter server will connect to to manage that ESXi host. So network adapters at this point here, I'm happy with we're going to use VMNIC0 as our management network. To be honest, in this ESXi host, I only have one network adapter. I can specify a VLAN ID if I want to isolate off this management network on a different VLAN. I'm not going to bother. don't have um, any VLANs configured. Next thing I need to do at this point here is just specify some settings for my IP version 4. Because when you install ESXi, you are given a DHCP assigned address. I want to change that, so what we're going to do is we're going to set a static IP address. I'm happy to leave the subnet mask and default gateway. So what I'll do is I'll just change the IP address to one that I've got specified and actually registered with the DNS server. So we're happy with all of that. We can hit enter. Then what we've got is we've got IP version six. So what I've done at this point here is I've disabled IP version six. I'm not using it. DNS configuration. So let's just hit the enter key. So my DNS server is 192.168.164.200 and in the case of the ESXi host name I'm happy with ESXi01 so when you do an install it normally sets that to um, local host and the primary DNS server was actually picked up from the DHCP server so that's fine but I've set that to static. So we're happy with all of those settings so we'll just hit escape here. Then what we've got is we've got our custom DNS suffixes. So I'll definitely want to change this domain. I'm going to want to change that to Brian O'Connor21.co.uk. So that's my domain. I'll hit the enter key. Make sure that's in as my custom DNS suffix, which it is. So we'll hit the escape key. We'll apply those changes. And then we've configured the management network. Right, so we start the management network. This is where we can restart the management network. So if we've changed from DHCP to static or static DHCP, we'll want to restart the network, but we did that as part of changing the settings anyway. Test the management network just sends out a number of pings just to ensure that the actual network settings are correct. So if I hit the enter key, so what we're going to do at this point here is we're just going to change this and we'll put in the Brian O'Connor21.co.uk. So we definitely want that in place. So we'll ping our default gateway, we'll ping our DNS server and we'll try to resolve the computer name to a DNS server. So we're OK on the default gateway, we're OK talking to the DNS server, and we're OK resolving the host name. So we know our network settings are correct. We have the ability to do a network restore. So in the case of this, uh, what we've got, if I just hit the enter key, we have the ability to restore network settings. So by restoring the network settings, we'll revert all the network configuration back automatically with the defaults. We can restore standard switches if we backed any standard switches up. And we also have the ability as well to restore uh, vSphere distributed switches if we back them up as well and we can back them up through the various graphic utilities or command line. Let's hit escape there, we're not going to do anything with that. Keyboard set United Kingdom, it will set United Kingdom as part of the install of ESXi. Our troubleshooting options, if we come in, we have the ability to enable the ESXi shell. So if I just use my Alt F1 key, we can see that takes me to a command prompt where I'm not being prompted to log in. So let's do Alt F2 to return us back to the direct console user interface. Let's just enable the ESXi shell. Then let's hit Alt F1. Now we have the ability to log in. So we'll just log in, put in our password, do a listing. So there you go, we're in the ESXi shell. Now what I'll do is I'll just do Alt F2 to take me back to the direct console user interface. And from a security point of view, really what I should do is disable that again. We can enable SSH, so we can connect to our ESXi host remotely by something like PuTTY. 
we can modify our ASXi shell and SSH timeout. So if we do enable them, we can enable it so it will automatically time it out after a certain number of minutes. Let's set that to 10 and 10. So we'll time them out after 10 and 10. We can modify the direct console user interface idle timeout. So I'll specify that as, let's specify that as, let's leave it as 10, 10's fine. Then we can restart the management agents as well if we wish. So host daemon, vpx daemon, and vpx agent, and so on. So we'll press escape. Then what we've got is we can view our system logs. So we can view our syslog, our VM kernel log, our config, management agent, and so on down the list. We can view support information if requested by VMware. And we can also reset everything back to factory defaults if we wish. Once we've configured everything, next thing to do, I suppose, is to log out. So all we'll do is we'll hit the escape key. And the escape key logs us out and we're back at the direct console user interface. And that's the end of this demonstration of configuring some basic settings for your ASXi host. Any more advanced settings you would want to do through command line potentially, or you would do it through the ESXi host client. And we'll have a look at that in a later demo. Thank you very much for watching.